What's going on? Before we start this video, just a reminder that we are still accepting submissions right now for our first ever film festival. So if you're a horror filmmaker and have a horror short or feature film, consider subs consider looking at the link in the descriptions below. This is going to be April 29th and 30th. April 29th will be exclusively digital, whereas April 30th will be live in person at the Alamo Draft House in Winchester, Virginia. So come, please, show us your nightmares. What's going on? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to our content, we create content like what you're watching right now simply to educate and engage individuals like yourself on mental health awareness and suicide prevention. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I have the privilege of being a writer, podcaster, and an events coordinator here for Victims and Villains. If you guys would like to hear a little bit more about what we do, podcasts, our nonprofit work, etc., links are in the descriptions below. But today we are going out for a swim, talking about the movie The Midnight Swim. The Midnight Swim is a 2014 film and is getting ready to get a Blu-ray upgrade prestigious release from Yellow Veil Pictures. That's the reason why we're talking about it. This movie tells the story of a respected and renowned doctor that goes deep sea diving and inexplicably goes missing. And in the mystery of her absence, her daughters come home to attend to her affairs, but are mysteriously drawn to the spot where the mother went missing. A couple of years ago, we did a piece uh, about a Canadian independent movie called Mouthpiece. Subsequently, we also sat down with the directors and stars of that film, and this film to me feels exactly like that film. It is a exploration of sisterhood and feminism, but also a piece on grief and understanding how sometimes life tears us apart. And when grief brings us together, what it's like to kind of readjust and kind of reexamine some of the relationships we hold dear to us. I'm probably going to compare this movie to Mouthpiece quite a lot. It, it Tonally and, and stylistically, they're almost, uh, they're very similar. And I'm just going to tell you to go check out Mouthpiece because I think it's a movie that you would really like. It's a one-of-a-kind film, much like The Midnight Swim is. Last thing I will say about Mouthpiece is if you guys want to hear more information, hear the the... Uh, what the directors and stars had to say, click the link in the descriptions below and check out our episode. So, stylistically speaking, Midnight Swim has some interesting choices that it makes. It blends a lot of different genres together. And if you guys follow our content here on YouTube, if you guys have followed our podcast for any length of time, you guys know that I am a horror guy. You can see Pinhead and Cenobites right behind me. Obviously, I'm wearing a nun hat. Like, I love horror. And so I say that statement to say this is that typically when a protagonist or a main character is using a camera to film the experience that the audience is watching it through that POV, it is usually horror. We look no further than to the groundbreaking Blair Witch Project, a film that revitalized the entire genre, Paranormal Activity. I'm sure that there are other genres out there that have explored the POV, whether it's a drama or comedy or, or even an animated uh, feature, but I've never come across that. So all of my knowledge of POV comes from the horror genre. And stylistically speaking, the fact that this is a POV film, it feels a little odd to get used to, but once it does get used to it, it really works. It allows these characters to be vulnerable and if you feel uh, like a connection to these characters that you're almost like a fly on the wall for this grieving experience. That said, I also will say this about the POV is that if it feels natural and it allows the story to progress naturally. So while it does take some, it is kind of off-putting in the, the beginning, by the end of the film, you're really connecting to these characters and that stylistic choice of allowing the POV angle really does work. 
Not to mention it helps the film feel unique and stand on its own really well. When it comes to blending genres, this film doesn't really work quite as well as the POV I like you to do. I'm gonna say that this movie just feels like a straight up drama. Like, yes, there are horror elements in it, but if you're coming to this movie expecting horror, expect to be disappointed. Because the aspect of the story that does handle horror, it kind of, it, it leaves so much to the imagination. Like, yes, it allows the audience to kind of make up their own assumption and kind of navigate and kind of, you know, do their own thing and interpret their own way. But it equally sucks that we, we never actually kind of feel like we kind of get caught. I almost spoiled it there for you, but I didn't. Needless to say, the horror in this movie doesn't work. Something that does work, though, is the cast. The three sisters, June, Annie, and Iza, played by Lindsay Burge, Jennifer LaFour, and Alexis Palladino. Because you have the angle of the POV and you have this layer of vulnerability that these characters are going through together the performances work really well like the chemistry with these characters is just off the charts like there are portions of this movie where it's characters dialoguing and i am not honestly caring about what is going on with the narrative like i'm just so drawn to these performances and the dialogue like it's just it's really stellar there's one monologue in particular from lafort that Honestly, just she just commands the screen and I literally just had to stop what I was doing and just be in amazement of this performance. Pacing is pretty good in this movie. Tone, again, is another problem. Uh, I talked previously specifically about how I felt like this movie in particular, like it, it blends a lot of different genres or at least like attempts to blend it but those tones that belong to said genres don't always work in here like the first two acts work really well but the third act kind of tries to go a little bit too much into the horror realm and a little bit too much into the thriller psychological and it just kind of lost me a little bit end of this movie the last act everything this movie just kind of falls apart a little bit Seems like the very thing that connected and brought these sisters together finds closure, but there's this one loose end that the, uh, the director just kind of wants to keep dangling for the next, like, act. And honestly, it just doesn't work. That said, let's go ahead and run this through our Rorschach rating scale. I'm just going to go ahead and give this one a 3 out of 5. It's a solid performance. The POV really works. The... the the writing is really stellar, and the first two acts are just absolutely stellar. But the last act and the use of the film's use of like horror and like a psychological thriller aspect of it really does lost me. It feels really out of place, and it just creates a tonal mess. But you guys can pick up your copy of The Midnight swim available video on demand and special edition blu-ray beginning january 25th and if you guys are interested in the blu-ray i'll have a pre-order link in the descriptions below that said let's go ahead and talk about our mental health moment if you are new to our content we do a thing called mental health moment where we pull a aspect of mental health from the film which we are talking about and expand upon it for just a few minutes in hopes to break the stigma around mental health and encourage anyone watching that might need help to get help. Obviously, as I've mentioned, this film deals really heavily with grief, but I actually want to talk about the process after grief that not a whole lot of people talk about. And that process is the very thing which brings these three sisters back together after all of these years. And that's the estate sale. That's that's the kind of the will and testimony of like, how we move on, how we grieve, and, and what do we do now with all of these possessions and things that are left behind. While grief is already hard enough to go through and endure, it, that process just kind of makes it that much harder a little bit. And I don't know what everyone's grieving process or, or post-grief or, or will process is like. I just know that the few that I've had to 
be a part of secondhand because of parents losing parents I, I know that it has been a it's been tough it has been one of the hardest things to endure and also to talk about but through that process it also allows us to bring one another together because we also learn and it rem death reminds us of how precious life really is so I want to encourage and I, I say all of that to say this is that in those moments in those seasons look for reasons to reconnect look for reasons to pour into someone look for reasons to reconnect to uh, any estrangements that might have taken place in the course of over time because honestly, family is super important and sometimes family is something and I'll even admit that myself, I take for granted. And so if any of my family is watching this right now by any happenstance, I just want to apologize for anything that I've said in this video or anything I've said or done in real life uh, that might have might have brought some offense or any hurt. And if you need to, give me a call. But I also just want to say that just to encourage anyone that's going through this process or think that they might be going through it at some point this year just be reminded that life is precious and maybe it's time for us to reevaluate what we hold dear i really hope that uh held it and if you're thinking about even ending your own life because you don't think life is precious please consider the resources in the description below um, that's all i got for you guys make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button if you guys are watching this on igtv make sure you guys hit that follow button because we have so much that we're going to be covering over the next couple of weeks with Sundance and Final Girl, uh, Berlin Film Festival. So make sure that you guys are tuning in so you guys know which movies to check out this year. Check out The Midnight Swim right now. Like I said, it's VOD and Special Edition Blu-ray. Have a great night, guys.